Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the God that is worthy to be adored, to be worshipped. Father, even as we have come before thy presence, may you be glorified, may you take all honor and glory in the course of this prayer, O oh God. May your people encounter you in a special way. Father, reveal yourself to us in a special way. Holy Father, we cannot do anything without you, so we need the power of your Spirit to come and dwell and uh, renew us, sanctify us, empower us, and make way this night in an extraordinary way, Father. Use this night prayer to bring glory to your name. Let heaven, the windows of heaven open, and let thy light, the light of your glory, shine upon your people, O oh God. Let every darkness, every cloud of darkness, around your people, begin to tear into pieces as your light penetrates, O oh God. Deepen our relationship with you, Lord, and by the power of thy precious blood, wash us with thy precious blood. Wash away our sins, O oh God, so that we shall be whiter than snow. This and many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We begin to cover ourselves with the word of Jesus, and we decree tonight that this is my night, that God is going to bless me tonight, that God is going to touch me tonight. Can you begin to pray that prayer? Pray that God will make way for you tonight. Ask God to visit you in a special way tonight. Let this night be a night of encounter. Let it be the night that the Holy Spirit will touch you in a extraordinary way. That God will fight your battle tonight. That God will touch you in a way that everyone will know that God did it. Father, give me a single testimony that will silence my enemies. Give me a testimony that will silence those who are pursuing me. Father, give me such a wonderful, outstanding testimony. Testimony that cannot be defied or explained in any other way, other than that you did it, O oh Lord. So, Father, touch your people tonight. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the worship. All the adoration belongs to your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. All the instruments you are going to use in the course of this prayer, Father, we ask that you touch them one by one, use them in a special way, Father, to bring a mighty glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All I need is a touch from Jesus. All I need is a touch from the Lord. All I need is a touch from Jesus. All I need is a touch from the Lord. All I need is your touch. All I need is a touch from Jesus. All I need is a touch from my Lord. All I need is a touch from Jesus. All I need is a touch from my Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, as I lift up my hand to the heavens, let anointing flow to deliver this message. Let your power flow, Father. I did not call myself into ministry. Father, you called me. Therefore, flow mightily, O Lord. Anywhere that sin will limit the way your son will be used. Father, 
we ask therefore for mercy over him. Father, forgive me my sins and wash me with thy precious blood. For you are the God of mercy. In Psalm 30 verse 8, your son David cried to you for mercy. You answered him. What you did in ancient time, Papa, do it again in our time. For Hebrew 13 verse 8 says that you are the same in the time of David, in the time of Abraham, even now and forever. Therefore, manifest your power, Lord. Father, we lift your daughter, whom you are going to use to minister in songs in the course of this prayer. Father, bless him beyond, bless her beyond measure. Bless her, embarrass her in a way that she would know that heaven has remembered her. Father, even now that this prayer is going on, let your angels look at her. Let her tongue be anointed with the fire. Father, we thank you. We stand against every power that wants to distort this message. We cancel their programs. We cancel their enterprise. We cancel their schemes and machinations. We cancel everything that will not bring glory to God. All our courtly kingdoms, I silence their activities this night. I cancel our cultic meetings that have been programmed to take place this weekend. I decree in the name of Jesus, it is hereby cancelled in the name of Jesus. Father, bless us through prayer. As we go through the stations of resurrection, let your people experience the power of resurrection. Then Paul says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Father, we are joining the Apostle Paul in our prayer. That we may experience the power of thy resurrection to this prayer. Let those who are sick resurrect, Lord. Resurrect from their sickness. Let those who are crippled by the forces of life, by the powers of darkness, be healed and be delivered. Let your people be triumphant again. Give your people testimonies, O Lord. Let the light of resurrection locate your children. Father, we thank you that today is a special day. The day that your children shall experience thy power. That even as we are at thy feet, like Mary, may you fill us with thy word and decorate us with thy grace. These and many more we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. And amen. amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on
Yes, my Lord. Jesus, your people who are imprisoned unjustly, Father, deliver them now. Father, sanctify them now. Father, visit them now. In the name of Jesus, every redeem of satanic reign against your people, Lakoto Robo Sekete, let the power of God touch them now. Touch your people and deliver them now. I refuse to be under the regime of the devil. I am under the regime of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord. Jesus, touch our people now. Let the power of resurrection begin to flow now. Let the power of resurrection cripple and destroy every spirit of sickness against my life. Every spirit of death, every arrow of death, let them be arrested now. In the name of Jesus, my people begin to pray now. I can feel the power moving now. Let the power touch you. The power of resurrection is upon you. Receive him now. Let him come upon your family. In the name of Jesus, let the weak be strong. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus, the power of resurrection, let him touch you, let him touch your marriage. Every marriage that is not turmoil, every marriage that is disintegrating, let the power of resurrection begin to bring them back, begin to heal them now, begin to restore them now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus, every state of enslavement, let the power of resurrection destroy the forces of wickedness, destroy the Powers of slavery against the people of God in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Papa, touch your people. Holy God, they are welcome. Fill your people with that fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Every spirit of suffering that has kept me in the tomb of suffering, let the power of resurrection deliver me now. Deliver my family now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. From today, I am a man of grace. From today, I'm a man of testimony. From today, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. The grace of God is upon me. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Papa, touch your people. Change my ugly story. I don't want to remember like this again. Father, visit me. Pay me a visit, Lord. Yes, my Lord. Your word is saying, call on me and I will answer you. Yes, my Lord. Even now, I shall call on you. Papa, answer. Papa, you did pray to answer me. In the name of Jesus. Let me not go empty handed. Papa, give me my husband. Papa, give me my own wife. Papa, give me my own children. Papa, give me my own job. Father, touch me, Lord. I don't know what is happening in my prayer life. Father, make me a fire again. As you found resolution for me. Let me be revived again. Let me be revived again. Again, in the name of Jesus, let the revival come upon my family. In the name of Jesus, Kill Jesus, manifest your power. Take over this atmosphere, Lord. Let your people receive the breath of your power. Ay, ay, ay. Touch your people, Lord, again. Let every dry bone begin to come back to life again. Touch your people, Lord. Oh, Jesus, let the power of resurrection visit you, visit your business, visit your career, visit your health, visit your ministry, visit your destiny, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, oh, breath, oh, breath, breathe upon me, holy Kataraba, holy spirit, bring your wind upon me, let your wind of fire come upon me now, and breathe life into my life, and restore me now, in the name of Jesus, every very virtue be exhumed now, in the name of Jesus, every very glory be exhumed now, in the name of Jesus, every very blessings, very talents, very ministries, be exhumed now, in the name of Jesus, yes my Lord, children that their death have been that has been put in a prison or been buried, let them be exhumed now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. This is the time for Holy Ghost exhumation. In the name of Jesus, let him touch you now. Every power that wants to kill you, let the Holy Ghost power, let the power of resurrection deliver you now from that spirit of the tomb. In the name of Jesus, you shall not die. You shall live to testify the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, the resurrection, you are the life, Jesus, the resurrection and the life, Jesus, you are the resurrection, you are the life, Jesus. The resurrection 
Jesus, Jesus, the light. Jesus, the resurrection. Jesus, the light. Jesus, the resurrection. Jesus, the light. Oh, my Jesus, you are the resurrection. You are the light. Jesus, the resurrection, Jesus, the light. Amen. Say, second station, the disciples of Jesus discovered an empty tomb. The disciples of Jesus discovered an empty tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and they we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My dear friends, the Bible tells us in John chapter 20, verse 8, then the other disciple also went in, and the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw, and he believed. The empty tomb was not a proof of resurrection, but rather a silent witness of the greatness of our Lord Jesus. You know, the, the, the event of our faith, an empty tomb. That tomb used not to be empty. When Jesus was there in the tomb, it was not an empty tomb. But when the power of resurrection came, it became an empty tomb. I don't know what I've been buried in your life. But I know the power of resurrection will deliver you tonight. I pray that in your destiny, let God visit you and make that tomb an empty one. <laughs> Look at the life of Jesus. The enemies pursued him until they killed him. Jesus was buried. But the power of resurrection delivered Jesus, irrespective of all that the evil ones had done against Jesus. I don't know the power that has been pursuing your life. Whatever place they have put you into, may the power of resurrection rescue you in the name of Jesus. Any power killing good things in your life, ay, 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 ay. wait a minute. Is there a power killing good things, killing your testimony in your life? Even in this moment of prayer, may the power of resurrection cripple every power that wants to kill the good things in my life in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Who is that Goliath that is pursuing your destiny? Who is that Pharaoh that wants to pursue your destiny? into the grave. Who is that herald? Who is that witch or wizard? Who are that satanic agent that is or that are fighting, pursuing and giving you a hot chase in life? As they chased Jesus into the grave and Jesus resurrected, may you resurrect from where they have put you in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. And let the enemies be scattered. Let those who are pursuing you scatter. Let household wickedness scatter. Let internal pursuers scatter. Let external pursuers scatter. Everything that have ganged up against your life, let them scatter. Let God scatter their language. Scatter their agenda. Let their conspiracy backfire in Jesus' name. May God touch you. Let God fight them. Let him fight them. Oh, Jesus. Father, confuse them and let them fight themselves. Every kingdom that I want to keep me in the tomb, refusing that I come out, 
Refusing that the tomb shall be empty. Father, let them be there in the name of Jesus. Let them be in the tomb. I command the such forces that are against my life, against your life, to expire and be crippled today. Now and forevermore we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. Arise, O Lord, let thy enemies be scattered. Arise tonight, let our enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. O Lord, my God, arise, arise, O God, let our enemies be destroyed. Arise tonight, and let our enemies be destroyed. Arise, mighty God, and let our enemies be scattered. O oh Lord, my God, arise. Amen. Jesus. And that brings all to the third station. The risen Lord appeared to Mary Magdalene and to the apostles. We adore you, O Christ, and they will praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My dear friends, the Bible tells us in John chapter 20, verse 14 to 18, how Jesus revealed himself to Mary. Calling her Mary. Just a, a call of the Lord took away her fears, took away her worry. Just that the Lord called her name. All the earthquakes around her ceased. All the darkness around her got retired because somebody spoke. <laughs> and that's what the same Jesus who spoke to the storm and the storm listened to him. Mary was going through a heavy storm in her life because her Savior had died and was buried. Can you quantify the joy in this woman when Jesus called her Mary? There is something about the way Jesus called Mary that made her know that this was Jesus and not another person. That means that when Jesus was on earth with her, she was always with Jesus. She had communication with Jesus. She was eating from the same table with Jesus. Always praying to Jesus. Jesus was never a stranger to her life. There was a relationship between her and Jesus. Do you really have a relationship with Jesus? If the answer is yes, then look out for that voice of Jesus, that silent voice that will call you, that will assure you that you will come out of that problem without being destroyed by the fire, that you're not going to be drowned in the sea of troubles or perdition. That voice is the voice of Jesus. When he speaks his voice, it heals. It brings power to deliver. He who delivered Mary from her misery, from her confusion and hopelessness, may that God minister to you tonight and deliver you. May he touch you. May he touch you. 
May he wipe your tears. May he do something new in your life. Look at Mary. Mary had lost passion. She had lost strength because of tears, because of cry, because of sleepless night, living in agony, wondering why would her Savior die? <laughs> or unto her that her Savior never died. He lives forever. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that your God lives forever? Do you believe that your God is a God who will never abandon you? That God is a mighty God. No matter the situation you find yourself, that God wants to see you through. His name is Jesus. You remember that the disciples of Jesus were in the boat and it is, the storm came against them to swamp them. And that was dark. It was getting dark. And they, they were doing their best to come out of that situation to see Jesus walking on the water, heading to them. To do what? To go and deliver them. To go and rescue them. They thought it was a ghost, but that was Jesus. And so when they saw it was Jesus, their fear disappeared. And the Bible says that they now desired that he comes into their boat. Wow. They now desired that Jesus comes into their boat. It is time for us to desire that Jesus comes into our boat. No matter what to go through, no matter the situation that we are going through, we are asking him to come into our situations, to come and deliver us from every misery. And the Bible says in John 6 verse 21 that they wanted to take him into their boat. And indeed, Jesus honored their request and came into their boat. Do you know what happened when Jesus came into their boat? The storm ceased. All right? And uh, they found themselves safely to their destination. John 6, verse 21b says, Suddenly, we were able to cover miles and reach our destinations. I pray tonight, every storm that has come against your life to stop you from where God is taking you to. <laughs> May Jesus come into your boat and they stop them in the name of Jesus. I decree tonight that you shall be unstoppable. I decree tonight that the grace of God shall locate you. I decree tonight that the mercy of God shall locate you. I decree tonight that God shall vindicate you in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus. I decree tonight that the healing power of Jesus shall make way for you where there is no way. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Begin to talk to him now. Begin to talk to him now. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the power of God begin to touch you now. Let the power of God begin to deliver you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Touch your people, O oh Lord. Touch your people, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we need your vindication, Lord. We need your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, touch your people, Lord. We want to come out of this ugly situation. In the name of Jesus, we need your vindication, Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, 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 call on him now. Call on him now. He will vindicate you. Call on him now. He will see you through. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Papa, touch your people. Holy Ghost, touch your people. In the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to him now. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on him now. The Bible says, Romans 10, verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Call on his name now. No matter your situation, our Lord is more than able. To deliver you. Oh, Jesus. As he comforted and took away the shame, the bitterness in the life of Mary. May Jesus do the same thing in your life. May he speak your name. May he talk to you. May he comfort you. May he minister to you. May he give you hope again. May he make you compassion for him again. When Jesus 
now spoke to Mary. I said, Mary. Mary was revived. Now, Mary now went and became an evangelist. The first evangelist after the resurrection of Jesus was Mary. And she was the one that went, to told, and went and told the apostles that he had risen. I saw him. Not somebody's story. I didn't see that in the newspaper. He didn't see that in the, in the news. I saw him myself. He spoke to, him, to me. May God reveal himself to you in Jesus' name. In your troubles, may he reveal himself to you. Even in your dark seasons of life, we don't know what is happening. I don't know where to step your feet or foot. May God deliver you. May he minister to you. May he reveal himself to you and comfort you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know my Redeemer lives. I know He's not far from me. I know when He shall arise. The world will know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know, my Redeemer, leave it. I know he's not far from me. I know when he shall arise, no one will know that my Redeemer, leave it. I know, I know, my Redeemer, leave it. I know He's not far from me. I know when He shall arise, the world will know that my Redeemer, leave it. Amen. Jesus. And that brings us to the fourth station. The risen Lord appeared to the men on their way to Emmaus. The risen Lord appeared to the men on their way to Emmaus. We adore you, O Christ, and there we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My dear people of God, our Lord Jesus, in Luke chapter 24, verse 15, and verse 25 to 27, revealed himself. In fact, he came and was part of the journey of the men on their way to Emmaus. We are inviting Jesus into our journey to heaven. We're asking him to help us to be people who are heaven-minded. We're asking for divine touch in this moment of prayer. Oh, Jesus, any power that wants to pursue us and push us out of the way of righteousness, may God use this prayer to arrest such forces. In the name of Jesus. Let God put confusion in the kingdom of darkness that are fighting us. In fact, let them fight themselves. In the name of Jesus. Father, we need you. As you we are with the men on their way to their mouths, may you be with us, O Lord, on our way to heaven. Father, touch us again. Let our ways be pleasing to you. Father, where we have misstepped, May you have mercy and bring us back to the road of righteousness. Help us to love your presence. These men were on the road, but you were with them. Father, may we recognize your presence. May we have your, an experience of your presence, Lord. Give us a personal encounter. These men encountered you. Father, many are crying to you. They just want to see you. Reveal yourself in a deeper way, in a more personal way, to your children. Father, touch us again. Oh, Jesus. Let it be well with your children. You, you are the God of wonders. Father, arise 
and manifest your wonders in my family, in my life, in my journey to heaven. In the name of Jesus, Father, take over, Lord. Magnify your glory upon my life. In the name of Jesus, oh Jesus, take over, Lord. You are a wonderful God, full of wonders. May my life be wonderful because you are wonderful. Judges 13 verse 18, and the Bible says, My name is wonderful. That is who you are. Father, may the wonderfulness of your name follow me on my way to, to heaven. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Come walk with me. The road is more narrow. Come walk with me. I cannot walk alone. For the road is dark. And there are many dangers. Come walk with me. And you will bring me home. Jesus, come walk with me. The road is small and narrow. Come walk with me, Lord. I cannot walk alone. For the road is dark. And there are many dangers. Come walk with me. And you will lead me true. Jesus, come walk with me. The road is small and narrow. Come walk with me. I cannot walk alone. The road is dark and there are many dangers. Come walk with me and you will lead me home. Amen. The fifth station. The risen Lord is recognized in the breaking of the bread. The risen Lord was recognized in the breaking of the bread. And we adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Listen carefully, my friends. The Biblical account of Luke chapter 24, verse 29 to 32, tells us how the men on their way to Emmaus eventually got to the end of their journey. And uh, because it was nearly evening and the day was almost over, then they talked to Jesus, requesting that he passes the night with them, that he stays with them. And that request was honored. And we are asking the Lord Jesus, even as he honored the request of these men who were longing for God, who were even confused, but he stayed with them. He honored their request. So we pray now that Jesus pays us visit and reveal himself to us in the name of Jesus. Now listen carefully. The Bible says that Jesus took the bread. While he was with them on the table, or at the table, and then uh, he took the bread and they said the blessing and broke it and gave it to them. And at that moment, their eyes were opened and they recognized it was Jesus. And that instant, Jesus disappeared from their sight. And they said to each other, Wow! Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? Jesus was recognized in the breaking of the bread. A lot of people still think that Jesus is not in the bread. 
that Jesus is there in the Eucharist. He is the bread of life. Don't forget that. He was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means bread. The, the, the name Bethlehem means bread. It was not by chance that Jesus came to this world through Bethlehem. A sign to us that he is the bread of life. Until today, Jesus still reveals himself to us in the Eucharist. A lot of people still have problem believing that Jesus is the Eucharist. That the the Eucharist you receive is the body and blood of Christ. And I want to share with you an experience I had some many years ago. And the priest was celebrating the the Eucharist. There was blessed sacrament exposition going on. And I saw the face of a man inside the Eucharist, inside the monstrance, inside the blessed sacrament. I said, wow, what am I seeing? I looked well. Remember, I was far away, but I could see. The eyes moved. I said, what? And behold, it was the face of Jesus. He came out from the sacrament. I have had the privilege to see him several times. Eucharistically. Coming into beings. Prevening his, his being through the Eucharist. My dear friends, when we go to Christ, we go to His presence in the Eucharist, let us adore Him. Let us worship Him. And because He is the Lord that we receive, may He touch us in a special way. May He open our eyes to behold Him. Look at John the Baptist. When he saw Jesus, he saw the dove over. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What was John talking about? Behold him. That is, see him. Look at him. Look unto him. Fix your eyes on him. That's what behold means. Don't turn left. Don't turn right. Just keep looking. Gaze. Gaze. That was the message of John. How many times have you visited Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? I wonder my life without the Blessed Sacrament. I can't even describe that. I, I, how can I pass through a day without contact with the Blessed Sacrament? For me, Blessed Sacrament is my life. That's my life. That is the center of my spiritual oppressions and activities. That Jesus in the blessed sacrament is a great gift to the church. But how men are blind that don't even see Christ in the breaking of the bread or in the Eucharist. If you understand the mystery of the Eucharist. Every day you go there and be with the Lord. One of my friends was doubting whether the Blessed Sacrament is really Christ. And he told me, about okay. in my sincerity, I went to the Blessed Sacrament and said, Lord, if it is true that you are the blessed sacrament, I want an evidence. <laughs> How do you expect from a young engineering student who just graduated and was full of formula in his head? All right? Trying to get a formula <laughs> for Christ. 
He said, Bro, okay. before my eyes, I saw fire. That it was as if I was engulfed in fire or by fire. Christ just revealed himself to him as a consuming fire. If you haven't seen consuming fire, you won't understand what it is like. You won't understand that. From that day, that young man fell in love with the blessed sacrament. I want to encourage you. Make time to be going to blessed sacrament. Even if it's for a short moment, but go there. Christ is there waiting for you. He's there waiting for me. That is Jesus. Our Lord, I ask of you a favor now in this prayer. That as many that will go to the blessed sacrament this week, for the next seven days, starting from today, let them receive miracles. Let them receive favor. Father, since I found the favor that when I ask of you, you, are, you answer me. Father, answer me again. As many that go to blessed sacrament, seven days, starting from today, let them go with testimonies. Let them move with testimonies. Father, give them blessings. Father, give them testimonies that cannot be hidden. Give them public testimonies. Testimonies that the whole world will hear. And believe and know that truly Jesus is the blessed sacrament. As many that want to receive that testimony, lift up your hand, whatever place you may be. My Lord Jesus, my own hand is up. On behalf of my family, I lift up my own hand. Father, as many that have joined me to lift the hand, that we shall be in your presence, visit you in the blessed sacrament between now and next seven days. That this is what we are committing to doing. And that, Father, as we are committing to this, we ask of you to reveal yourself to your people. And to give them a marked testimony. Give them a supernatural healing. Give them, Father, a new look. Let them be transformed. On Mount Tabor, in Matthew 17, you transfigure God on Mount Tabor. Father, let your people transfigure before your presence, wearing the garment of the dazzling light of your power. Father, I minister that those who are believing you for wife or for children or for husband or for job or for promotion or for revival in their prayer life or for their own family, Father, as they go to the blessed sacrament, let them receive answer. Receive the bread of power in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Oh, sacrament, most holy, most sacrament, divine. Oh,
not as given the every moment dies the every moment dies The sixth session the risen Lord appeared to the community of disciples. The risen Lord appeared to the community of disciples. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross, you are within the world. My dear people of God, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 38 to 40, tells us how Jesus came to the disciples. The disciples were troubled. <laughs> and then look at Jesus coming <laughs> to be among them. And that heightened their fear because they thought it was a ghost. And Jesus told them, Let not your heart be troubled. Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he has said this to them, he showed them his hands and his feet. So that way, the fear disappeared. Then I knew that this was not a familiar spirit taking the nature of Jesus to come and deceive them. Jesus revealed himself to them in this episode. In this very sixth session, we are remembering people who are visited by ghosts, by demonic beings. <laughs> I was talking with a young man some time ago. He married a lady but that marriage was going through a lot of turmoil. And he was getting frustrated. He ended up drinking and smoking something he used not to do. He just wanted to find peace somewhere. But of course, he couldn't find peace in those things. It's only in Christ who can find peace. Then one day, one evening, he came back to the house from work. He was lying on the bed thinking about his life. He said, but well, we can't believe what happened. Somebody just walked into the house, into the room. Meanwhile, the door was closed. Meanwhile, the door did not open. But the person walked through the door and told him, you married my wife. If you don't leave her, I will come and kill you. Do you hear me? And then this spirit now walked through the wall. Came into the door, walked straight, said what he said, walked through the wall. That marriage eventually ended in divorce. And that lady married another man and then took in and the wife pregnant of a child, driving from work back to home, she had an accident. And she died with her pregnancy. I want to tell you something. That lady had a spirit called the spirit husband. That wanted to make sure she remains single. That she doesn't have children. She doesn't, have, she doesn't get herself into marriage. Most men die because they're married spirit, uh, women with spirit husbands. I hear their stories all the time. Such people are always visited by ghosts, by spirits. Many of you hear that testimony from Dallas so many years ago. I guess it was about five years ago. And this lady who moved from New Jersey to Dallas 
moved into a house with a family, but every night you'll be hearing people moving downstairs. You come there, you can't see anybody. In the night, the children will be screaming, Mommy, 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 all they will be screaming. And you come, you can't see anybody. The children will say, Mommy, look at, look at, look at. Mommy will look, Daddy will look, they can't see anybody. And the woman said, Brother, what frightened me was that one night, they broke my plate in the kitchen, breakable plate. When I came there, I saw my plate just broken, pieces on the ground, but I couldn't see anybody. And they were living in fear in the house. So one day, they now ask their, uh, you know, a, a, a neighbor uh, living on the same street. I said, do you have an idea of people who lived in this house before we came in? So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that house was broken open one day by police and saw somebody dead inside. You see that? That is a killer spirit there. And uh, it is a haunted house. A haunted house is a house that traffics or inhabits ghosts. I don't want to get further on this. This could be a message one day in ministry. But I'm praying for people who are tormented by ghosts. People that have ghost apparitions. Ghosts appear to them or before them and they terrorize them. Make life miserable for them. I pray tonight, let Jesus walk into such families and they drive every ghost, every evil spirit in the house. May he drive them into the abbeys in the name of Jesus. There are people who live in haunted houses. It's terrible. I once visited a lady, said, Brother, this house, I see ghosts. She sees them live. <laughs> you know? I said, I'm talking to you now. You see them? She said, No. I can't see them now here. Many times, we even attract these spirits into our houses. But they talk of another day anyway. But I pray for somebody that that family that is haunted, haunted house. May Jesus pay you a visit. As Jesus walks into your family, those ghosts shall walk out of your family in the name of Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. Every ghost in my family, every demonic spirit living in my family, I command you right now, in the name of Jesus, born by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let Jesus mark, stamp his footprints in your house this night. Just the footprint of Jesus is enough to drive away every rebellious spirit in your life or in the family. <laughs> Jesus. One unfortunate man who married a, a lady he didn't know that this lady had a split husband. Come and see a, the poor man. He will go to bed with his wife and the physically, I'm not talking spiritually now, physically, an invisible hand will lift him up and drop him on the ground. Just to tell him, this wife does not belong to you, it belongs to us. Frustrated him. Physical hand. But you can't see physically, but you feel the hair, the hands gripping him, lifting him above the bed. You know, it's not easy to lift a man, but they will lift him and brought him on the ground. Who is visiting your family? Who is that unwanted visitor, that ghost that have come to your family? I command them to cut fire completely, let them burn into pieces in the name of Jesus. Let them be paralyzed. Let them be paralyzed. Sometimes people tell me a lot of things that I begin to pity for them. The only thing I can do for them is to start praying for them and to encourage them to be joining the prayer line. 
you that? Many of you may have that testimony in this ministry. A lady who bought cars overseas. He bought cars in the United States, sent them to overseas. And then she was now to fly to her home country to go and sell those cars. Why she was airborne, she was struck by a ghost. She felt somehow. She said, brother, brother, I felt somehow. I said, maybe you can check myself in the restroom. She came out, walked through the aisle. Meanwhile, this was the deadness of the night. People had slept. The plane was flying above the Atlantic. And then she came to the door of the restroom, and uh, just then she collapsed. This woman didn't know any other thing that happened in her life for over a week. That was when alarm was set to the plane, and light lit, and the uh, announcement was made. Is there any medical doctor here? Two med medical doctors came out and uh, started to uh, check her up and found out that there, there was no way she could make, to make it to France because they were going to be stopped over in France. From France to uh, to to to, to the country, her country, and uh, the, the the doctors now advise that emergency landing have to be made to a nearby country, and uh, a lot of logistics are are required to do that. I'm not going to get into that long story, but eventually that that uh, emergency landing was made, and that was in Canada. That was the, the nearest, most available. Uh, airport they could land that was available that was it this woman was rushed to the hospital and the, the flight now took off and continued the journey it was days later this woman came back to life and when she was telling me her story say brother i just felt that something touched me i just lost consciousness of myself then i saw myself walking down in a dark road and then she said she kept to a particular place and saw her dead father. Who told her, what have you come here to do? Before she could talk, the father told her, go back. This is not your time. This happened this world. I wish you could be here to tell this story one day. Maybe I want to invite her one day to repeat her story. And uh, the, 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 as she was coming back, that was how she woke up. Meanwhile, it was almost a week. She didn't even know where she was. When she was told she was in Canada, she couldn't put one and one together. She couldn't tell what I was talking about. I'm supposed to be in Nigeria. I was in Ebon. When did the plane land? What am I doing here? A ghost was following her to make sure she doesn't make it in life. If I may ask you, is there a ghost that follows you? People tell me, brother, sometimes I see spirits that in a flash, bam, I see them either, over, over, either overtake me or see them behind me, and then a lot of such people live in fear. What they need is prayer. They need to be in a prayer ministry like this kind of ministry. You don't say please to such spirits. You don't try to lobby them. They don't need that. Just give them a hot dose of prayer. They will run away. So I pray for people who are being monitored by ghosts. People who are being followed about by ghosts. People that their businesses are infested, marriages are infested with ghosts. People that their enterprise are infested with ghosts. May the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth locate such people and deliver them tonight in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pay them a visit. Pull them out from that shame. Walk into their family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Did this sister I told you about in Dallas? So eventually, Brother Wakwe traveled to that place and we prayed. After the prayer, that was it. That was the end to today. No more visitations of ghosts. No more visits. Can you imagine you are paying the rent to your house and ghosts are living there free of charge? Is that an insult to the child of God? You pay the rent, you work hard, and then they will live for free. Even terrorize you, even break your plates. That's an insult. That's an error. But if you are a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, you terrorize your spirits. You terrorize them. You make your family too hot for them to be there. You know, if you had a testimony of that woman, the, the son, this small boy, uh, has the gift of visions. And this boy 
We will say, Mommy, look, look, look. Mommy will say, What was that? He said, Ghost, ghost, ghost. Mommy will not see ghost. So Mommy will thought that this boy was joking. But this boy will start crying. Mommy say, Ghost, ghost, ghost. And the, and the mommy, at, at some time, mother, mother, three getting concerned. Why is this child always doing this? I'm pointing towards. You see that the child is seeing something. You see, when you're seeing something, it's even when you're not seeing something. The child, you see the child turning face and eyes, to that there's something in the eyes are tracking. And then one day, somebody gave this, this woman the, this ministry's number, and she started joining this prayer line. And then this same child, that this boy that <laughs> always see ghosts saying, Oh, mommy, see ghosts, mommy, see ghosts. This child says, hey, mommy, see, see, mommy, see, 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 Jesus, look at Jesus. That same boy started seeing Jesus. What is the difference? What has happened? I want to explain that to you. You see, when the woman started joining a prayer ministry that knows how to use the power of the word of God to pray, the family became hot. She tapped the family into the reservoir of divine power of Jesus. And Jesus started visiting her. You see, what happens when you hear my voice or when you, we pray in this ministry, it goes beyond that to hear a voice of somebody. It is living to told him, brother, the brother, as you are praying, Jesus and Mary, we are moving from home to home, visiting houses, blessing them. That's what happens in the spiritual realm. So come into the ministry for your own good. David says, Psalm 1, 2, 2, verse 1. The moment I heard, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was filled with joy. If you are not happy that demons will use your pot to cook and use your own fridge to store their own food, then pray violently and command them out of your house. Use your, your heritage as a child of God and drive them out of your house. And I tell you, they will leave. That child is seeing Jesus. I pray from today, may you begin to see Jesus in your family, in your life, in your destiny, in your business, in your marriage, in your going out, and in your coming in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, and amen, and amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. We break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an chapter 20 verse 19 to 23 and the Bible tells us how Jesus came and stood in the midst of the disciples and he said to them peace be with you 
And then the disciples rejoiced. The Bible says they rejoiced when they saw the Lord. This was not the, the, <laughs> the first time Jesus appeared to them. Remember, there was a time they were afraid. In the sixth station, they were afraid. But in the seventh station, they rejoiced. <laughs> Fear gave way for peace to reign. I pray in your life that every fear in your life, let them give way. And let the peace of Christ begin to reign in your life in the name of Jesus. May Jesus give you peace. In his name, I minister upon you. Peace be with you. May the Holy Spirit come down on you. The Bible says that when Jesus came among them, then he said to them, Peace be with you. Again, he said, Peace be with you. And then he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathed on them. <laughs> the breath of God is powerful. <laughs> Psalm 104, verse 30. And the Bible says, when he sent forth the Spirit, he renewed the face of the earth. So Job chapter 33 verse 4. And the Bible says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty God gives me life. Jesus released his breath upon them, and he gave them life. Is there a dead organ in your life? Is there a dead relationship? Is there somebody who is believing God for a relationship a Holy Ghost inspired relationship that will lead to God's glory. May that relationship take formation through this prayer. Let the Holy Spirit descend on you. Let the breath of God make your formless and shapeless life to begin to have shape again. May God touch you. Let the Holy Spirit move over you. Genesis 1 verse 2. And the Bible says, the earth was formless and void, and the darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was moving over the surface of the waters. But now, the Spirit of the Lord is no more moving over the surface of the waters, but over the surface of your life, over the surface of your destiny, over the surface of your family. May God touch you now. Let the Holy Spirit come on you in the name of Jesus. Let him touch you in a special way. Father, touch your people again. In Ezekiel 7, verse 5, Oh, Jesus, your word say you, you release your breath upon the dry bones, and the dry bones came back to life. Father, let it be said again that the dry bones are coming back to life again, as you are releasing your breath upon your children. Father, children that are like dry bones, marriages that are like dry bones, I am ministering a prophecy, prophecy of Ezekiel 37, verse 9, where Ezekiel, in the prophetic unction, now gave a prophecy and prophesied, prophesied to the bread, prophesied, son of man. And God said to him, Ezekiel, prophesy, son of man, prophesy, servant of God, prophesy. And thou said, the Lord of hosts, come from, let the wind come from the four corners of the earth and bring life into the dry bones. So I decree now. Every dry bone in your life, let the breath of Christ come on you in the name of Jesus. Receive that breath of life now. Receive the breath of the Holy Ghost now. Receive him now. I can feel the power moving now. Let him touch you now. Let him touch you now. Receive him now. Receive him now. One, two, three. Take it now. Power. Jesus, take it now. Take it, my children. Let him revive you. Let dry bones begin to disappear. Let the regime of fire, the regime of the Holy Ghost begin to take over. And let there be a spiritual curiosity that we pull down and destroy every government of dry bones over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. He touched me. He touched me. And all the peace that flows my soul, something happened, and now I know that he touched me and made me whole. Jesus touched me, he touched me. 
his station. The risen Lord strengthened the faith of Thomas. The risen Lord strengthened the faith of Thomas. We adore you, O Christ, and they will praise thee. Because thy holy cross you have redeemed the world. My dear friends, Thomas, who ended the name Doubting Thomas, was strengthened by Jesus. All this time that Jesus was appearing to the disciples and apostles and all that. Thomas was not there. Thomas was just hearing the news. And so when he hear these things, he said, but how could it be? This man was buried. I saw his tomb. I was there. I was among those who buried him. How come he is coming to appear to people? <laughs> so, so his rational mind could not fathom it. So what he did was to doubt. Unless, unless I see him. Unless I put my finger inside him, inside his side. <laughs> unless I do that. Unless that happens. Otherwise, I will not accept that. I will not believe that. I will not accept this theory. <laughs> Jesus. My friends, somehow many of us are like Thomas. Doubting the power of God. Doubting the power of resurrection. Doubting the existence of Christ. I meet people who doubt that Jesus even lived on earth. Meanwhile, they believe that Napoleon lived. They believe that Caesar, Julius Caesar lived. And when I ask them, how do you know that Julius Caesar lived? And they didn't make reference to history. They make reference to literature. So they believe the literature book. But they don't believe the account of the scripture. It's an error. So I'm praying for people who doubt the living God, the praise of God, the, the, the mighty Jesus. Many call themselves atheists. They don't believe in God at all. They rather believe that they are their own God, that the God they are seeing is themselves. We are praying for them for repentance. Praise the Lord. You see, the doubt of Thomas was somehow like what I may call a redemptive doubt. It was a doubt that leads to faith. His own doubt led him to faith. But there are people that their doubt take them away from Christ. Look at Thomas doubted. How could this be? However, he still was seeking the face of God. He still came to fellowship with them. He was just following the teachings of Jesus. That's different from people who they doubt, they, do, they reject the truth, they reject the scripture, reject everything. Well, but we are praying for such people this night. May God arrest them in the name of Jesus. Families that either papa or mama or children have rejected Jesus and the worship of Jesus. We are asking Jesus to use this prayer to arrest such minds, such people. In the name of Jesus. Let him arrest them as he arrested Paul. Jesus. The Bible says, John 20 verse 29, Blessed are those who do not see and yet they believe. Father, help us to believe you even when we do not see. Even when all we see is the medical report. Father, give us the grace, the power to see beyond the medical report and see your own report concerning our situations. Doctors have said 
There is no healing. There is no hope again. But Father, we look beyond their reports. We look onto your own report. Your, your account, your word, your own account, your own report never fails. Therefore, Father, bless your people again. As Thomas dipped his finger into your hand and into your side and was cured of unbelief, so we dip our wounds, our broken heart, our disappointments and the betrayers by touching your wounds. Therefore, by your wounds, may you heal us again and deliver us. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I On the shore of Tiberias, the risen Lord ate with the disciples on the shore of Tiberias. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross we have redeemed the world. My dear friends, there were so many appearances of Jesus to his disciples after the resurrection. And one of such appearances was the appearance of Jesus at the shore of Tiberias. They didn't know it was Jesus. He just came like a regular person. And he had a breakfast with them. Look at Jesus saying, in John 21, verse 10 to 12, you see where Jesus was saying, bring some fish that you have caught. <laughs> and then, he now told them, come. Come and have breakfast. This is Jesus invited them to come to have a meal with him. The Bible says that none of them died to ask him, who are you? Because they recognized it was the Lord. They recognized it was the Lord. Do you know many of us have encountered Jesus without knowing that we have encountered him? Because he came in a way we didn't know or we didn't expect. But he gave them breakfast. I pray for you. What God did to the disciples, may He do it for you. May He give you a breakfast. May He break everything that wants to break you. Many of us have been fasting. You know how to break the forces that are standing against us to break the wall of Jericho, but the wall of Jericho is becoming stubborn. As Jesus invites us for a breakfast, may that wall be broken now. That wall of limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus satisfied the need of his disciples. 
They had labored, but got nothing. But Jesus showed them mercy. They were hungry, and Jesus gave them food. And after feeding them, <laughs> then Jesus, of course, revealed himself to them. Point of need. Point of need. Point of need. Jesus met them at their point of need. May he meet you at your point of need. And I invite you even now, talk to Jesus now, where you want him to meet you. Say, look, for Peter and the fear of the disciples, Jesus met them at the shore of Tiberias. Where do you want Jesus to meet you? Geographically, where do you want him to meet you? Maybe in Maryland? Maybe in Chicago? I don't know where. Maybe in South Carolina. I really want him to meet me right here in South Carolina. I need him in my family. I need him alive. Geographically, where do you want him to locate you? May he locate you there. May he meet you there. What of spiritually? Where are you spiritually? Are you in a good standing with Jesus? Are you in friendship with Jesus? Is Jesus your companion? <laughs> you see, Peter and the, the, a few of the other disciples, they were dining with Jesus. They had breakfast with Jesus. Companionship. Relationship. Do you really have relationship with Jesus? I pray this night for a relationship with Jesus. Father, we want to have a relationship with you. We want to have breakfast, not just breakfast, even lunch, even dinner with you. We want to have our entire being in you. Help us, Lord, to realize you, to recognize you, to see you in everything we do. And may our lives be pleasing to you. Father, help us. This and many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is Everything I need is in you. Amen. The time to station. The risen Lord forgave Peter and entrusted him to feed his sheep. The risen Lord forgave Peter and entrusted him to feed his sheep. We Adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross we have redeemed the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you hear did, did you hear the title of this tenth station? That Jesus forgave Peter. So what sin did Peter commit? Let's go to John chapter twenty one, verse fifteen. All the way to verse 17, even to verse 19. And the Bible says, when they had finished breakfast, remember the ninth station, they had a breakfast. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, 
Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Follow me. Do you see where this ended? Follow me. <laughs> wow, wow. Mm. So what did what did Peter do? What went wrong? What did Peter do? My dear friends, Peter, already in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, was chosen by Jesus and was called to be fisher of men. And the Bible tells us that he left everything and followed Jesus. But when Jesus died and was buried, Peter thought that this was the end of the ministry, the end of fishing for men. So he now went back to fishing fish. Jesus called him into fishing for men. He called him into evangelism. But Peter left his duty post, left his spiritual office, left the key of the kingdom given to him, left everything, and went back and picked his net and started casting nets. That was the sin of Peter. When we leave what God called us to do, and we go after our own, we are committing sin. It is disobedience. Let me simplify this way. Your father sends you on an errand. Okay? Take this car and go to the shop and uh, buy me A, B, C, D. And then you took the car and then remember that your father traveled and he will not come back for one week and he decided not to go and buy those things that he needed in the house. When your father comes back, would he clap hands for you? Of course not. It is disobedience. Alright? Peter abandoned his apostolic office. D remember the very reason why Jesus came in the first place in the first place to the world was to bring the kingdom of God into this world. To bring the kingdom of God into us. So that through him we can now Live the life of righteousness. No righteousness. Live in light. You know? <laughs> Do you hear that? As far as Jesus is concerned, that very ministry of the kingdom was so important to him. That was his mission on earth. To establish the kingdom of heaven in the heart of man. And he chose his disciples to use them to perpetuate his ministry. But Peter abandoned that project, that kingdom project. Jesus was not happy. However, Jesus forgave him. Remember that in the early hours of Jesus' ministry, he came and said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. My kingdom is not of this world. Unless a man is born or again of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God as a little child will not enter into it. I have come to call sinners, not the just. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the dead who hunger and thirst for justice, for they shall be satisfied. 
Blessed are they who suffer persecution for justice sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You are Peter. And the rock. And upon this rock I will build my church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Do you see Jesus talking about kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven? And he handed over the keys of this kingdom to Peter. And Peter took the keys. Who knows where he put the keys? And then went back to the river, to the shores, to fish, fish. Are you like Peter, leaving the office that Jesus called you? Many of us, hearing my voice, are called to be evangelists. But we are busy with other things. Many of us know we are called. Many don't even know. You see, when Jesus was telling me I was called, I didn't even know what I was talking about. But I made up my mind, Lord, direct me what you want me to do. Let us answer the call of the Lord. You may not be called as an evangelist or as a minister or as a reverend father or as a reverend sister, but you may be called maybe to use your voice to praise God. There are many of you listen to my voice listen to my voice now. Your voice is golden. But you don't use it to worship God. It is an error. It is ingratitude. When you don't use what God has given to you to serve Him. By the way, what God has given to you is meant to use to be used to serve Him. Not for your own personal gratification or glory or satisfaction. Of course not. Ask yourself, what has God put in me or given to me that I'm not using to serve Him? Peter made that mistake. He was given the key, but he put the key somewhere. Many of us have lost our keys. It is our gifts that make it a way for us. Remember, the Bible says the gift of a man make it a way for him, even to dine with the kings. If you use your gift to serve God here on earth, you will die with Jesus someday. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to use the gifts you have given to us to serve you, to worship you, and to win souls for you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. And amen. Over and again, I give you my life. Over and again, I give you my soul. Over and again, and over and again, I belong to you, Lord. Over and again, I give you my life. Over and again, I give you my soul. Over and again. And over and again, I belong to you. Amen. Jesus. Hello. The 11th station. The risen Lord sent the disciples into the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your Holy Ghost you have redeemed the world. Our Lord Jesus, you sent your disciples, including me, including everyone here, to become your ambassadors, bringing the message of Jesus to the broken world. Help us, Lord, to answer this call. My dear friends, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, and the Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Who was talking? J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. He was the one talking. To observe all, not some, 
all that I have commanded you. Then he tells them, I am with you always until the end of age. Matthew 28, verse 20. He who sent us to go and their testimony of him will also be with us. God is talking to us. Do you know that you are sent of the Lord? Do you know that? A lot of people take excuses and say, Oh, Brother Walker comes to prayer every day. Every day he's always praying for people. People call him and all that. Well, what what as that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's not working, he's, he's just a, a priest and uh, uh, he has the time to do that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. To start with, Paul Wabwe has a full time job. Number two, Paul Wabwe is not a priest, he has children. And yet, by his grace, Ministry for me is full time. I don't even understand how I function. So I can't even explain it to you because I don't even understand it. But something I have come to understand is that when God calls you and you answer, He takes care of the nitty gritties, He takes care of the challenges, He takes care of things that don't found you. You know, when the Lord, when I started this ministry, I was wondering, how do I do this? How will I be working and dealing with my little kids, dealing with family, you know, things, and then, and then be dealing with the ministry? That, that was even when I didn't even know that I was getting into something big. I couldn't put the things together. That time... We are doing the prayer line once in a week on, on Wednesdays. It was not even easy for me. Then, on 10th of October, 2012, then the voice of the Lord came and said, from today, the prayer line should be daily. I, I could not know what to do. I said, God, I accept. Help me. I was already talking that one day a week is even a challenge. But then daily, oh my goodness, I accepted. Few days later, Mary came, the mother of Jesus. I said, hey, I want Rosie to be taking place too. Uh oh. Do they want me to die? Anyway, I didn't even ask them that. I couldn't understand. How could I be functioning pre line daily? And then rosary daily? But you know what? I put my mind out of how to f navigate it. I just accepted it. And I tell you, since October 10th, 2012 to date, this pre line has been functioning daily. No excuse. No vacation. No, that is 24 hours. I mean, daily. So at this point, I don't even understand how I function. Many a time, I, I drive all the way from work, jump in and, and just arrive and look at prayer line five minutes more. And then I'll just go and pray and say, Lord, you call me into this. I don't even know what to tell them. I've come to understand there is something deep about being called. That when you accept it, Jesus takes care of the rest. That's what I've learned from my own experience. If you are that man or woman who is still struggling with accepting the work that God has called you to do, let my story encourage you. I have family. I do school runs. 
My wife is a full-time student. It's not easy. But God gives me strength to function. He gives me strength to function. If you could say yes, like Jesus, to his Father in heaven, yes, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, God will take care of the rest. Mary knew that saying yes to, to God, becoming pregnant outside marriage, that is, in such a way that Joseph wouldn't be responsible for the, for the pregnancy, that by the court of the Jews, that was like Mary accepting death sentence. Because they would stone her to death. Mary knew the implication of saying yes, yet she said yes. And today, her yes brought Jesus to us. Her yes brought salvation to us. Permit me to say, in my personal opinion, that Mary was the first disciple of Jesus. She followed Jesus. After discipleship, or a disciple is someone who follows, who follows, follows. Mary followed Jesus from beginning of his life to death on the cross, even to the grave. A true disciple follows Jesus that way. May we answer the call of the Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to answer the call of the Lord. This we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says and tells us there how Jesus spoke to disciples and then was taken up into heaven where he took seat at the right hand of God the Father. And Jesus, who ascended into heaven, has gone to prepare a place for us. Mansions, not just a room, not a, a, a cubicle. Mm -mm. The Bible says, mansions. I'm going to prepare a mansion for you and for me. You, you cannot quantify the beauty of heaven if you have the privilege to travel to heaven in the spirit, you wouldn't like to come, out, come back home to this earth. You, you, there's no way you would like it. Jesus is promising us a wonderful place in heaven. We pray that we shall be heaven-minded so that when he comes to take his own, we shall be among them, among the saints. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. He's alive, he's alive, amen. He has risen from the dead, he's alive. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ He's alive. Amen. The thirteenth session. Mary and the disciples kept vigil in the upper room for the Spirit's advent. Mary and the disciples kept vigil in the upper room for the Spirit's advent. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by a holy cross, I've read in the world. 
The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, and when they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. All the apostles devoted themselves with one accord to prayer. Together with some women and the Mary, the mother of Jesus. Do you hear that? <laughs> Mary was there praying. She didn't say, Oh, I'm the mother of God. Oh, I'm a, the mother of Jesus, the King of Kings. You push your and pray, let her come. Mm -mm. She was there with them, a humble woman. Can you imagine her office? That no one will ever occupy that office as the mother of God. God, from eternity to eternity, would have only one mother, and that is Mary. And look at how she humbled herself to come and uh, be with the disciples, praying there in the upper room. And the Holy Spirit came down. Even here in this ministry, Mary is here with us. By the way, this is her ministry. Hearts of Jesus and the Mary Ministries. So this is our own upper room where things happen. You wonder why there is this wonderful, powerful miracles taking place in the ministry? Because of those who own the ministry. It's not broken that owns the ministry. Someday I will die and give way. The ministry continues. We're asking our Blessed Mother to intercede for us so that we in this upper room shall be praying for an encounter with the Holy Spirit. May the miracle that took place in the upper room of the ancient time happen in our own time. May this ministry spring forth an apostolic movement that is unstoppable all over the world. Let there be revival that will spread like wildfire over the hearts of men all over the world through this very ministry. Oh, Blessed Mother, intercede for us. And use this ministry to advance the work of your Son. This a minimum we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Great things shall happen when Mary tells me for us. Great things shall happen when Mary tells me for us. Great things shall happen when my mind tells me for us. Great things shall happen when my mind tells me for us. Amen. The fourteenth section. The risen Lord sent the Holy Spirit. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your Holy Cross you have redeemed the world. The Bible says in Acts chapter two, verse two to four. Suddenly there came from heaven a noise like the strong wind, and it filled the entire house. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each and every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, the Holy Spirit came down upon the people of God. Remember that Mary was there among them. Already, don't forget, that in the beginning, I'm talking about in the beginning of God bringing Jesus to the world, He first sent angel Gabriel, the angel of good news, to tell Mary of her being able to, to conceive and be a son that will call Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, if you may wonder, how would this come to pass? 
Then they had to explain to her the Holy Spirit will do what overshadow you. So Mary already received the Holy Spirit. So what is Mary doing in the upper room? What is she doing here? When the disciples were waiting on the Holy Spirit, why was she there? I have an answer for you. She was there to represent you, to represent me, to represent the church, to represent the body of Christ. That was what she was there doing. Mary was there for you. Can you imagine that? Praying that you receive the Holy Spirit. And because she was there among them, she who first received the Holy Spirit, now through her prayer, had heaven open and the Holy Spirit descending upon the apostles and disciples. And even as she is here with us in this ministry right now, in this our own upper room, may, by her intercession, may the Holy Spirit descend on you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Spirit of fire. Receive the Spirit of God. Receive the Almighty God, the power of Shekinah. Let the driving wind, the mighty wind, flow upon you. Receive the tongue of fire. Oh, Jesus. Touch your people. Touch your people. Give your people the gift of tongues, the gift of visions. People that their gifts have been arrested. Father, even now, renew their gifts, Lord. People with the gift of evangelism, let that gift be activated. Every arrested gift, let those gifts be released now. Every gift that have been kidnapped by the enemies, let those gifts be snatched, be rescued from the hands of the enemies. Receive the Holy Spirit. Let Him touch you now. Let Him present into you now. The Holy Spirit is the radiant light, the mighty light of Jesus. Let Him present into every nook and cranny of your life. Let Him turn to you and guide you. Let the Holy Spirit present to the church, into every area of the church, and let the church be on fire again. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, touch us again. Give us ministers of fire. Give us men and women who shall be fire in this generation. Give us reverend fathers and reverend sisters and the people of fire, ministers of fire. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we need you. Let the fire of God begin to burn. Commission your people again. Let there be spiritual commissioning of apostolic life now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Father, take over. Holy Spirit, take over. I want to have my own Pentecost experience tonight. Touch me in a special way. Touch our people now. In the name of Jesus. Give us bold ministers. Fearless ministers. In the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit now. Receive the Holy Spirit now. Receive the Holy Spirit now. I can feel him. Now. I can feel him moving now. Receive him now. Power. Jesus. Touch our people again. Yes, my Lord. Make me on fire. Make me on fire. And say, come with the fire. Build a wall of fire around me. Let me be a wall of fire. Let my eyes be on fire. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Anointing fall in my life, cover me from head to toe, give me the power to do your will, Lord, that way, amen. Anointing fall over me. Cover me from head to toe. Give me the power to do your will. Oh, Lord, I pray. Amen. Jesus, for this wonderful night, who gave you all the glory, just begin to thank him, begin to appreciate him for all that he has done for us tonight. Thank him now, thank him now. Father, we appreciate you. Let's, Lord, we thank you. Jesus, thank you. Mighty God, thank you. We are covering the prayers of this night, of Jesus. All that you have done for us, Lord, may we return them forever in the name of Jesus. We cover the instruments you use tonight with the blood of Jesus. May you bless them mightily in the name of Jesus. Your son you have used, strengthen him the more. Your daughter that you have used, Father, make him a fire. Make him a moving fire. Let Make her... A, a spiritual locomotive engine that when she's moving, demons are falling, demons are having casualties. Father, take her to another level, bless her mightily, strengthen her, Lord. Where the enemies want to marry, perish her, make her imperishable in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You have given us victory. We will lift you higher. Omega. We will lift you higher. You have given us victory. Lord, we will lift you higher. Jehovah, we will lift you higher. You have given us victory. We will lift you higher. Omega, we will lift you higher. Amen. Amen. We therefore cover this prayer, Brother of Jesus, and we decree that the blessings we have received today shall be permanent. And may the name of the Lord be glorified, who has brought into our lives the power of resurrection. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once more, we cover our brother and his family and ministry with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.